Firstly, it's important to understand that punk rock sprung from multiple areas of counterculture throughout the 60s and 70s. Punk rock was a response to the mainstream as it rejected the mainstream. Most people know punk rock for being really fast-paced with heavy distortion and aggressive lyrics. But more importantly, it wasn't just about the music. It was a way of life. It was a rejection of imperialism, of capitalism, of authoritarianism, especially of fascist uprisings. The radical nature of the punk rock movement sprung from its DIY or do-it-yourself outlook or philosophical lens. Most punks, especially in its origin, were pretty upset by the corporatization of musical identities and such cultural appropriation of said musical identity through counterculture has been seen in the hippie movement even to this day. I do think it's important to note that a lot of punks even to this day has critiqued its own movement for being exactly its own worst enemy. As in, punk rock has effectively sold out and became mainstream itself. This is why you get really weird slimy people like Michael Graves trying to say that conservative is the new punk. Bitch, it never was punk. Conservatives in both the Democratic and Republican Party, at least in the United States, have been trying to quell the punk movement at least as long as the 1980s. This nonsensical bullshit can be observed with the inception of the PMRC or the Parent Music Resource Center. This slimy organization created what was called the Parental Advisory Sticker, also known as the Tipper Sticker among punk rockers like myself. They try to sell this absurd fucking and honestly dishonest idea that consumers need to be informed on whether or not the album has explicit lyrics or not. This in itself is not an issue, for we actually have trigger warnings for that exact reason. However, this is not about trigger warnings, this is more about censorship. During the inception of the PMRC, and to some extent today, the PMRC would threaten to sue any big chain stores like Walmart or Target or Kmart if they were selling albums with a tipper sticker on it. Furthermore, it became less about identifying explicit and triggering content in music albums and more about identifying specific groups and scapegoats using key phrases like occult and gangster to list a few. Keep in mind that these phrases are extremely vague, so occult can literally mean anything from Satanism, witchcraft, anarchism, Nazism, as if they weren't already more fucking horseshoe theory about it. Keep in mind that this entire theatrical form of political censorship was orchestrated by wives of male politicians who were greedy for money and power. The same exact wives were so willing to scapegoat the rap community for being misogynistic without pointing out the misogyny in fucking country music. I mean, is it really any surprise that they targeted Body Count for their song Cop Killer, but they did not hold the same standard for Conway Twitty's song about grooming underage girls? Am I supposed to take seriously a bunch of fucking white, let's say, self-proclaimed feminists whose sole critique of the patriarchy is that we live in an X-rated society? Because once again, white feminists like Tipper Gore and Susan Baker are wives of men in power. Never mind that men in power tend to vote against women's rights such as abortion and women's health care. Even Jello Biafra went as far as to critique Tipper Gore's false flagging of the music scene as a misdirection for what patriarchy truly stands for. If these wives of political husbands truly wanted to see systemic change against the patriarchal class structure, they wouldn't be censoring people for the sake of winning lawsuits. Instead, they would be volunteering at battered women's shelters. Bello Biafra was taken to court a couple of years ago uh, for the album Franken Christ by um, the Dead Kennedys. Well, what we're seeing here is uh, what I see as a false controversy. It's rap music and rap music is being cast as a Willie Horton poltergeist type figure in order to advance the agenda of the religious right backers of Tipper Gore's organization, the PMRC. In my case, I can relate to NWA's song about the police because after my record Frankenchrist was blasted by Susan Baker and the PMRC in Variety, two weeks later, nine police officers, three from LA, six from San Francisco, broke a window by my front door, stormed into my house, 
tore the place apart like you'd see KGB people doing a, t a TV movie or something, went through my address book page by page comparing names, and while I sat there on a chair with a bathrobe on with two cops with their jackets zipped right up to about here so you, they might be packing a gun, circling around me like sharks. It was a subtle form of rape in a way. And then after a year, about, what was it, two months later, charges were filed against my record. A year and a half later, it finally came to trial. Three weeks sitting in a courtroom in Los Angeles watching lawyers argue over not just the supposedly explicit insert by an Academy Award winning artist from Switzerland, my lyrics were put on trial. A huge blow up was brought in and was gone over by experts line by line. In the end, the jury did not agree with the allegations of the PMRC. They deadlocked seven to five in favor of acquittal. But after the trial in a paper called the, the Metro in Nashville, Tennessee, Tipper Gore was asked about my trial and said, quote, I'd like to take credit for it. I accuse you of trying to destroy my career and ruin my right to make a living. No. And, and, for being, operating as a front for people like Jesse Helms, Phyllis Schlafly, in order to drive the arch-conservative wedge into the mainstream. Rabbi Cooper, if you think public enemies got problems against Jews, wait till you meet the organization endorsed in Tipper Gore's book like the Back and Control Center. The Back and Control Center is a group of cops from, I believe, Orange County who send manuals to police departments and to parents claiming that, among other things, the Jewish star is a symbol for Satan, that high-top tennis shoes and black clothing can be a sign that your child might be turning to heavy metal and should therefore be deprogrammed. If a kid shoplifts or becomes involved in a gang, then, well, it must be the music's fault. To me, Practicing fraud like that to the point where doctors who used your video in a Milwaukee hospital told a kid who was was, came in to be treated for clinical depression that his Iron Maiden t-shirt was the problem. That to me is the real child abuse. Frank Zappa, after introducing his lawyer to the PMRC and reciting the First Amendment for reference, he went on to say, Any rating system opens the door to an endless parade of moral quality control programs based on things certain Christians don't like. He further added, what if the next bunch of Washington wives demands a large yellow J on material written or performed by Jews? Keep in mind that Frank Zappa had to defend his own album in fucking court from the PMRC for an album that was 100% instrumental. This type of bullshit is not unique to Frank Zappa, Jello Biafra, Twisted Sister, any punk rocker, or anyone in the hip-hop community, but it actually can be extended to people like Miles Davis. Miles Davis tells his story of how he was assaulted by the police several days after he had just released his most successful album, Kind of Blue. He says, This white policeman comes up to me and tells me to move on. I said, Move on for what? Turn down for what? I'm working downstairs. That's my name up there, Miles Davis. And I pointed to my name on the marquee all up in lights. He said, I don't care where you work. I said, move on. If you don't move on, I'm going to arrest you. Davis continues his story by saying, I just looked at his face real straight and hard, and I didn't move. And then he said, you're under arrest. He reaches for his handcuffs, but he was stepping back. I kind of leaned in closer because I wasn't going to give him no distance so he can hit me on the head. A crowd has gathered all of a sudden, out of nowhere, and this white detective runs in and BAM! Hits me on the head. I never saw it coming. Blood was running down the cocky suit I had on. I mention all of this because like all forms of oppression, music censorship is intersectional. Not to mention that the censorship of art itself is not excluded to just music. Charlie Chaplin, who is one of the greatest film directors, actors, and outspoken anarchists in history, was effectively exiled and banned from the United States, you know, the land of the free, for being associated with a communist movement. People often cite Joseph McCarthy's baseless anti-communist claims as a pathetic attempt to overthrow the labor movement in the United States. But Joseph McCarthy's bullshit isn't unique to him either. Historically speaking, in World War II, the Nazis were widely known for scapegoating various marginalized people groups. They went to the extreme lengths of burning art pieces and literature made by marginalized people groups that they deemed as degenerate. 
Martin Luther, one of the most important theologists, priests, authors, composers, Augustian monks, and one of the most fundamental figures, was not only excommunicated from the Roman Catholic Church, but the Roman Catholic Church burned his work as well. And any Christian who happened to own a piece of his work was also to be excommunicated by the Roman Catholic Church. Riddle me this. How is anything that I had just went over any different than the bullshit pulled by the PMRC? What this means is that within the past 50 years, punk rock has become what was known as a rejection of mainstream heteronormative culture, and it just became a fucking corporate icon. By no means am I saying that punk needs to be reactionary or, you know, offensive by any means necessary. But the punk rock counterculture became safe for corporate consumption. And at this stage, it was far less about challenging the status quo. Punk rock as a movement, just like the queer movement, has become a fashionable commodity for the capitalist system. Is the punk rock movement itself to blame for this? I would never say so. I wouldn't even closely entertain that idea. When we have CBS and Time Warner and Universal Music Group completely capitalizing on the safety net of a manufactured so-called counterculture that would rather spend its money at Hot Topic than to donate to a mutual aid organization, build dual power structures, or stand by the labor movement. Because as long as hip-hop or punk rock or any counterculture is not questioning the status quo, then there really is no reason for the corporations to fear. Tipper, Tipper, let you speak. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first of all, that's a very bizarre rendition of what my group is about. We are not right-wing fundamentalists. I happen to be a liberal Democrat. We have two coalitions. Then why do you speak at Phyllis Schlafly Excuse me. I, I, okay. Excuse One me. at a time. It's simply not true. I happen to be a liberal Democrat. I work with Republicans and Democrats on this issue. We have one coalition with the national PTA who advanced the idea of record labeling so parents would be alerted when there was graphic material. I don't know if that and helps though because I, I don't know if that helps or hurts because I think kids when they see the label they want it even more. Okay, but let me finish. There's something yeah. much worse Oprah, than that though. Oprah, he has labeled a lot, he's leveled a lot of charges. We also are supported by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Why? Why are parents and teachers and doctors concerned about graphic lyrics in young children? There's a reason for that, and there's a reason to, and there's a way to deal with that with respect for freedom. We had nothing to do with the problems that you had. We want to educate you people to that take credit for we want to educate. That was not an paper. accurate quote. All right, I'll pull it out the, for you. Right the, here. <laughs> Have you what ever been of, misquoted what by somebody? Of, what kind of an example are you setting for your own children when you no, lie on national I am TV? Not.